to the Purple Lit Nerd Podcast for May the 12th, 2018. I am your host, the amazingly adorable Rebecca Thistle, podcasting to you live-ish from my kitchen slash dining room table in my apartment, which I call Jeffrey Thistle Work. Yes. So, (laughs) I have had, like, the worst time trying to structure this show, and I'm trying really hard to focus, and it's just, it's, it's hit or miss. So I've got my outline, I think, I hope, I feel like I'm missing something, and I, 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 I'm gonna do my best, okay? So, before we get into this, um, I have to do this, I'm issuing a spoiler alert, okay? If you have not read the Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn, go, 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 go read it now, seriously, just Turn this off. Go buy the books. Go now. Read it. It's amazing. It is my favorite book series. Even better, go listen to it on audio because Luke Daniels is the best. I love him. I just want to snuggle him. (laughs) Oh, God. If he ever listens to this show. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. So, but. Spoiler alert. I'm getting into some things that are pretty important so if you if you care about spoilers stop right now I generally don't care about spoilers so like I said generally I don't care about spoilers actually spoilers help me sometimes because I get really emotionally invested in shit and I just go like "Ah!" but sometimes knowing how it's gonna end actually makes me go oh okay (laughs) so um Yes. So I issued my spoiler alert. I warned you that this could be a little rambly and meandering and that I might miss some stuff out. So let's get on with this. Hexed is the second book in the series. One of the things I really like about this series is that it is, I mean, it, there's a lot of shit going on, but it is so well structured that you almost forget how much is going on. <laughs> like, I didn't realize how how many elements to the story there actually were until I said, I'm going to talk about it on my Lit Nerd podcast, and then I had to start coming up with outlines. Okay, well, I got to cover this and this. Oh, fuck. That is a lot of stuff, and that's why I've been having a hard time with this show. So, Hexed, let's start by talking about the aftermath of Hounded, because that's what that's what Hexed really is, is, is it's... Um, is it sort of cleaning up the mess left behind after Hounded. So there, there are three major elements to the mess, and I will tell you them now. First of all, and probably most importantly of all, we have what is perceived by the world's pantheons as a deicidal druid. Because as you should recall, from Hounded, um, Atticus O'Sullivan kills Angus Oag. And there's an airplane going by outside, and I'm not happy about it. Okay, good day. Um, so we've got a deicidal druid on our hands, and people are kind of happy about it, but not really so much. We'll get into this in a minute. We've also got... Demons! Demons running around. This is kind of a lesser element to the story, but it's still pretty important. Um, we've got demons running around, because if you'll recall, Angus O got the final showdown before Atticus offs him with his magic sword that Freud would have a heyday with. Um, 
Angus Og opened this huge portal to hell and crafted a binding for all these demons to kill the druid. And most of the demons listened, but a few of them went, Ha! We're free! And they went and ignored the binding and ran off and did whatever. Well, we find out uh, some other things about the demons, which again we'll get into in a minute. But I think most importantly to the big overarching story of Hexed is the fact that there is a power vacuum. Uh, a supernatural power vacuum that is now inhabiting the area. Again, we're going to get into that. So those are the three things that, that we're going to be dealing with in Hexed. Yay, Becca, you have an outline. Oh my gosh, this is like crazy. This show is going to suck. No, it's not. It's going to be great. Okay, so let's start first with talking about our Deus Idol Druid. Um, <clears throat> the book starts out right off the bat with um, Atticus sort of reflecting on what he's just done. He just kid where this is about three weeks. The story starts about three weeks after the big showdown in the Superstition uh, Mountains. And, oh, fuck, I just realized I left some other stuff out of my outline. That's okay. We'll get into it later. Um, so... It ends with the the big showdown in the Superstition Mountains where he kills Angus Og. He also killed Bress, but that's sort of a less important thing. So Atticus is reflecting on this, and he says, when you kill a god, people notice. Um, and goes on to, to talk about how other gods in other pantheons have um, been approaching him to congratulate him on his victory, warn him not to pull that short of that short, that sort of shit on them, and to say, hey, why don't you pull that shit on somebody else that we don't like because shenanigans. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that word, but I just love it. <clears throat> but I think most importantly of all is that everyone and their dog, you know, their whatever <laughs> whatever the the uh divine equivalent of pet would be <laughs> everyone is sick of thor the norse god thor and his fucking shenanigans they're like you you really need to go get rid of that guy he is a douche he is a royal asshat get him the fuck out of our world and plane of existence and just make him stop and the reason that they're approaching Atticus about this um, is because Atticus, as a druid of Gaia, is able to shift planes. So he is able not only to walk the earth and take care of the earth, he's able to go to places like um, Tirnanog, obviously, because that's the Celtic plane and he is a Celtic druid. Um, but he, he's also able to go to Asgard, which is the where the, all the Norse gods hang out. But there's other planes within the Norse pantheon, like uh, Nivelheim and Mustelheim, etc., etc. Um, he is also able to go to like Nirvana, which he at some point, not not in Hexed, I think he actually says this in Hammered. And he's able to go to Nirvana, but he doesn't really like to hang out there because this total absence of um, desire it just means nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody really cares. They're just sort of there, and it's kind of it's kind of annoying. So, so because he's able to do this, these these other gods want him to go off their perceived enemies. The Japanese want him to go fuck with the Chinese and vice versa. The uh, Greek gods want him to go fuck around with the Roman gods because the Romans stole everything from the Greeks and the Greeks are kind of nah about it. And uh, so Atticus is able to do that. But most importantly of all, this story starts out with a conversation about our about with uh between Atticus and his blood-sucking lawyer 
I will never get over how awesomely appropriate that is. <laughs> but it, Leif Helgerson, who has a very personal vendetta against Thor... Like I said, everybody hates Thor, but Leif seems to hate him the most. So Leif is trying to enlist the help of Atticus O'Sullivan, the Druid of Gaia, to help him go kill Thor. Because he's got this very, very personal vendetta against him. And Atticus sort of goes, not my problem, yo. I, I. <laughs> they get into a Shakespeare quote battle, it's really fun. I love I love the interplay between Leaf and Atticus. I really do. Just a side note. But um Atticus says to Leaf, uh killing Thor is an honor I dream not of, which pisses Leaf off and he goes away and has a little hissy fit and won't talk to Atticus again. So um he, he's basically like his attitude is, I'm not doing shit for you until you agree to help me kill Thor. So keep that in mind, right? Right. So that's that's sort of the fallout of our deus idol druid. Next on my outline is the fact that there are demons still running around. So he has to go clean up these demons. Well, early on in the novel, I think it's like chapter 3 or 4... Uh, one of these demons seeks him out in his neighborhood, which is fun, right? And so with the help of his mesquite tree and the Sonoran elemental, he defeats this demon. But then right after he defeats this demon, the Navajo trickster god, Coyote, comes up to his house and is like, Hey, so I just saw you kill a demon and I didn't help you because that's what tricksters do. But there's another one, and you're going to go kill him, because it's your fault he's here. I'll help you, but I am I am telling you, you've got to do this, or I'm going to fuck up your life even worse. <laughs> so, so Atticus has to go deal with that. Lots and lots of problems with demons. Um, and the way he goes about doing this with Coyote is they decide that the because it is a flying demon they later find out it's actually not just a demon it is a fallen angel um Atticus decides that they that they have to kill it with bows and arrows which is good for both of them because you know stereotypes <laughs> you know old old beings who know how to use projectile weaponry um so um the reason that I'm I'm bringing attention to this is part of what the, what Atticus decides to do in order to kill this demon is he needs to get his arrows blessed not just by a catholic priest because you know demons are of the judeo christian flavor they're the bad guys in in that sort of pantheon um, he needs them blessed by the Virgin Mary. So in order to do this, he goes to his neighbor, who is a good Irish Catholic wi woman, the Widow McDonough, and he talks to her about Mary and gets her to pray to Mary to come manifest on the earth and go help all the drug addicts and delinquents in a bad part of town and um so th and and then also to bless his arrows which the widow does do and um that Atticus gets his arrows blessed and then he and Coyote take a stolen car because thrice cursed trickster gods right they take a stolen car and they go defeat this um this demon who's hanging out at a high school at a local high school and uh and they win with these blessed arrows and i mean it, it's a really funny scene the, the, i think that's one of the most epic battles <laughs> that i've ever heard and and it's one of the reasons why coyote despite the fact that you cannot trust that dude for shite you cannot trust him at all. 
I absolutely adore him.